This video is a wee bit different. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step and talk you through my thought process as I put together one of the composites from this recent set that I did entitled Last Outpost. I've really favoured doing these ones for some reason, I don't know what it is, or just something about them that I really enjoyed doing. Perhaps it goes back to my childhood. So what you're going to see is you're going to see my workflow recipe of Photoshop on Eric and Luminar and where each one for these images plays its part. And as I said, I'm going to talk you through and it's basically just my thought processes in it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through my thought process with the build of these and just how to create the depth and dimension within them. So the, the actual image size is Pixels is 9898 by 3508 and a resolution of 300 dpi. So the first layer, the first layer was a sky that I had in my collection from Air Beach. And the first thing I did after that was I created the sky to sit as the base layer. I then went in and using the curves tool, darkened it down with that as well. I've also dropped the opacity because the underlying layer is still there. I've dropped the opacity only by 8%. And then because I wanted the figure in the middle, the other two images, the figure is here and then the figure is here. So I wanted the final one with the figure in the middle. So then because of these clouds leading in, I knew because I was putting smoke in from the gun, I knew that it may get distracted by this. So what I did was I copied blue tones from here and created a brush and just painted that in and dropped the opacity of that as well. The opacity I dropped down to 82% and I also dropped the fill as well so that it would allow it some of the background to show through but still keep the effect. After that, what I did, because I'm trying to create depth in this and create a quite a bit of distance within this image, I added a fog layer. And with the fog layer itself, again, I turned down the fill to 42. Then I was thinking about the buildings and how they're going to fall into place. So these are brushes, these are Photoshop brushes. You can create Photoshop brushes yourself actually, but these are Photoshop brushes I downloaded, some buildings in the background. And you can see from this one as well, because I knew it was going to be in the background, I dropped it in and I also applied a Gaussian blur to it as well. Also, to help with the atmosphere of the image, I pulled back the fill again and that would allow some of the blue to show through in the clouds. To tie all the images together, I used lightning in all of them. So the first image is lightning. The second image has the lightning coming from the gun, which looks like the firepower of the gun. And with this image, I added a couple of bolts of lightning as well, just to help tie them all together. And knowing that later on I'm going to use Oneric and a slight flare down here, that's just a simple brush to add the flare in, knowing that once I use Oneric, that's going to intensify that. After that, I wanted the figure to stand out. I wanted that nice contrast behind the figure. So the figure is dark. So what I did was I put a lightning there, knowing that the figure is going to be in the middle. Also, one element that's in all of them is this here. And this is actually just a section from another model. And it helped tie in with each image. But as you, if you look at each one of them, individually you'll see that you never see the top of this so that was actually a, a wee nice thing that I thought I would add as well and that's just for me that's to take it from the point of view that could these robots androids be hanging from a mothership but that was just in my head when I was creating this then I started to add more buildings in and you see these buildings are quite dark and they don't have as much Gaussian blur added I think, if I remember correctly, I only added about 1.8 of a Gaussian blur to these. But these are darker, and the reason they're darker is because they're coming closer to us. So there's more contrast as things move closer to you. So you're thinking photographically as well when you're putting this together. Next, I added in that back building there, which doesn't have as much Gaussian blur. Although it's in the same level as this one, it doesn't have as much Gaussian blur applied to it. Again, creating depth. Every time I'm doing this, I'm thinking about creating depth. Atmosphere is then added by the smoke brushes. And that's just painted across. And you'll see it sits in front of this one and this one as well. But I've still more buildings to come in here. 
I'm trying to create a scenario with these three images in this set. And so I use the same elements in each one nearly. So the foreground elements, mid to foreground elements have been dropped in now. And that again is just to help tie all the images together. So you can see that there's parts down here when you're building it that just don't match up. But knowing that there's other elements going to be added into this, it doesn't matter at the moment. First of all, we add the orange because I wanted that orange just to come through everything. We're complementing the blue here as well. So the blue and the orange is in every other image as well. So that again tying the images together. Knowing that I'm going to use Honor it later on, I've added a glow in here. Honor it will take care of that, although you can still see through it. Honor it will take care of that. Then the figure starts to drop in. So you can see how this image is built up and the figure is in the foreground. This glow will be emphasised in Honor it, which will come round some of the areas of the image as well. And we can't just put the figure there and have no effect on its environment. So what I did was I created a colour fill layer. And you can see it only affects certain areas of the image. The colour for the colour fill area was chosen from around here. And then it was clipped to the layer of the Android. Then a hide all mask was applied and that allowed me just to paint in areas that I wanted the light to affect. Like just around here and down here and down the back barrel of the gun. We don't want it in the front or down here or anything because the light is coming from behind. So that's why it's only in certain areas and it's just to help tie it in to the image because if I turn that back off, it's a stark contrast. We need to blend it into the image as well, thinking about how light works. After that, more ambient smoke is applied. Again, creating depth. This time it's a painted over everything. Next one is going into the smaller points. And if you notice this yellow down here in the barrel of the gun, Painted in in yellow and then a slight outer glow applied. Next one, more obvious, the blue in here. The next is the gun smoke. And so we add that in with one brush. Chosen from around this area here and then adjusted just to lighten it up slightly because I needed it to stand out from the background. Then doubled it up and lightened that using curves. The next one was to reflect the light from here onto the smoke. So what I did was I copied the layer up again, then changed the hue saturation of the layer more to a blue to match this, but not directly matching it, and then painted it in slightly with that. I used the hide all mask and then painted it in slightly. Finally, with the smoke, one band of smoke coming up there. Just again, creating depth through the entire image. The next elements was to intensify the light and the glow of the entire image. And that's why I used Honoric to do that. It's really quick when it comes to doing it. So therefore, you see the first one in and you'll notice the differences down here. The next one again, intensifies it even further, but within chosen areas now. Because when Honoric comes in, it comes in with a mask and you can opt to paint in or paint out certain elements again. Same as Photoshop, just creates a, a reveal-all mask. The next one was the lighting streaks coming from here and here. And there is actually a couple up here, but I've left them really, really faint. I then doubled them up just to give more intensity to it. The next thing was I used Shift, Alt, Control and E or Shift, Alt, Command and E. Created a layer, took it into the camera raw filter in Photoshop, added a vignette brought it back out and then put a hide all mask on and only painted the vignette into areas that I wanted it to appear in. So I'll flick that one back on and off. So you'll see it doesn't go over the entire image, it only goes over certain areas. After that, I wanted to intensify more light in the lightning down here, down here. So that's the image nearly coming together. So the final step now is for me was for to take it into Luminar. And once it was in Luminar, that's where I applied the Bakersfield LUT, which ties all three images together. It's used at different intensity in all three layers, but the, the LUT is the Bakersfield one, which helped tie all these together for me. I also used the AI tools to enhance some of the Android itself. And that's how this image came together. Same process for the rest though.
Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it helps explain some of the thought processes, everyone will have different ones, but some of the thought processes when you're putting composites together. There is a touch of realism, even in the sci-fi, because you're thinking of it from a camera's point of view, so as a photographer's point of view as well, so you can play around with that. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that and hopefully it helped explain some of my thought processes when putting together a composite image. If you've enjoyed this video, please check out some more videos in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated and it helps me grow my channel and do more videos for the channel. Remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.